So now I want to take a look at hydration reactions, and the first is going to be acid catalyzed hydration. And once again, there is some similarity to what we did with alkenes in this regard as well. You might recall that with an alkene, if we use dilute H2SO4, so H2SO4 in water or just H3O+, that it adds an H and an OH, and it does so in Markovnikov fashion, and that's a hydration reaction. You might also recall that we had one other set of reagents involving mercury here, so Hg. OAC2, comma H2O, so followed by NABH4, and it essentially does the same thing, adds H and OH in Markovnikov fashion. Uh, in this case, though, it doesn't go through a carbocation, so you don't have to ever worry about rearrangement. That's the big difference, but in the example I've chosen, they give you exactly the same product. Uh, well, in this case, it turns out uh, the analogous reaction with alkynes uses a little bit different reagent. With a terminal alkyne, it turns out you need mercury to catalyze it. And so in this case, in addition to the H2SO4, you add in HGSO4, or just simply HG2+, plus, uh, might be written above the arrow there. Uh, and in this case, we add one equivalent. We never actually get a chance to add it twice, as it turns out, we'll see. Uh, but mechanistically, it's somewhat similar. Uh, minus the mercury in this case. Uh, it turns out with a terminal alkyne, we absolutely need the mercury in there. We'll find out in a second with the internal alkyne, you can get away with just using uh, aqueous H2SO4. Uh, but this is gonna add an H and an OH. It's gonna add it Markovnikov, so we'll add the H on the less substitute side. We will add the OH on the more substitute side. So, and it turns out what you form here is what we call an enol. And an enol is an alkene and an alcohol all from the same carbon here. So in this case, we call this an enol, and it turns out enols are often much more stable in the corresponding what we call keto form, and they undergo what's called tautomerization. And specifically, you might hear it called keto enol tautomerization. So and it turns out this equilibrium lies heavily towards the right uh, for most enols. And so the enol here, we're not actually gonna even consider it a product. We're gonna just look at it as an intermediate. And once it tautomerizes, because it's gonna tautomerize to such a significant extent in most cases, we'll actually look at the keto form, which in this case is a ketone, as your actual product. That will be your observed product. So in this case here, the carbon oxygen double bond is more stable than a carbon carbon double bond, and that's usually uh, what's driving this equilibrium towards the right here, making the keto product your observed product. Uh, in this case, we'll deal more with that keto enol tautomerization in a little bit, but again, we did add an H and an OH Markovnikov, but instead of ending up with an enol, that thing tautomerizes to a ketone, and that's actually the product you're supposed to predict. So we looked at acid catalyzed hydration here for a terminal alkyne. Now I wanna look at it for an internal alkyne where your carbon-carbon triple bond is not at one of the ends of the molecule. And in this case, the mercury is not needed and we often just use aqueous H2SO4 or you could just write H3O plus again. Uh, and in this case, you're actually gonna get a couple of different enols. So normally this is Markovnikov, but with an internal alkyne, both of your sp hybridized carbons are equally substituted. And so the H and the OH could go either way. So you could end up with this enol if you add the OH on the left and the H on the right, or you could end up with this enol if you add the OH on the right and the H on the left. So, and you get both. And then both of those tautomerize again, and your ketones, and there's two possible ketones here, those are your actual observed products. And again, with the internal alkyne, there's no preference either way. There's no Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov to even talk about. They're equally substituted carbons. And so typically you're going to get two products. The only exception might be as if you have like a symmetrical. So alkyne, if you have a symmetrical internal alkyne, it turns out both enols and both ketones you'd form would end up being actually the same enols and the same ketone products. Uh, so outside of a symmetrical one, but for an asymmetrical internal alkyne, you'll get two keto products instead of just one.